Shaw. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's not a single person on our side of the aisle that wants the country to default on its debt. I want the American public to know that. There's not one of us that wants to default it on our debt. But we also want to see responsible spending, and we know we cannot give the White House another credit card. Look, we can walk and chew gums. We can solve both problems. Why does it have to be either or? Why does the, this Capitol Hill live working in silos? I'll never understand it. What we can't do is push this problem onto my grandchildren and cripple their generation with burdensome debt and interest payments. And for the life of me, I don't understand why my colleagues across the aisle want to destroy future generations all so that they can function as climate demigods. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. You know, Jupiter is the Roman god of climate and weather. Indra was the Hindu god. Horus, the Egyptian god of climate and weather. Zeus, the Greek mythology god. I ask you, who's America's climate god? Is it John Kerry? Is it Al Gore? Why do we have this religious experience with climate rather than using common sense, talking about affordability, reliability, and all the while, America's carbon footprint is going down? Today's White House and the Democrat Party have become the European Green Socialist Party. That's who they are today. They worship climate. And even, though, even the bank's meltdowns have been impacted by their worship of climate. Even our own Federal Reserve is upside down now, ignoring the same interest rate risk problems that Silicon Valley Bank ignored, all impacted by their climate worship. I just can't tell you enough how much I'm disappointed by the name of this hearing, the Default on America Act, blackmail, brinkmanship, and billionaire backroom deals. I don't know if I could come up with a more misleading and unjust title for a hearing. Again, there's not a single person on this side of the aisle that wants us to default on our debt. There's been no backroom deals, no brinkmanship. There's been no blackmail involved in this bill sent to us from our colleagues in the House. I believe the House GOP bill is a good solution. And let me be absolutely clear, there's no cuts to the VA or veterans benefits in the House Republican pro proposal, despite the lies coming from the left to the contrary. Democrats' fear-mongering and scare tactics using our veterans as political pawns are beneath the office we've been elected to serve. And of course, Republicans are going to keep fighting to protect and save Medicare and Social Security from White House policies that cut funding to those programs and dilute the resources. The irony is that, is that is your side of the aisle that truly knows a thing or two about backroom deals. You got a marvelous warm up with the American Rescue Plan and truly refined the art of the art, art with the also misnamed Inflation Reduction Act. What a joke. While drafting the IRA in secret behind closed doors, there were no hearings, no bills, no debate, and no discussion. One minute there was no bill, the next were voting on a sprawling wish list of the EU Socialist Green Party agenda items, like saddling small oil and gas producers in Kansas with devastating methane fees that won't have any impact on the environment. I'd love to talk, I'd love to have a real debate about methane in this room, in this hearing. I'm here to tell you what won't work. I care too much about my children and my grandchildren and my parents and hardworking Americans already suffering by 15% overall inflation since Democrats took control of gov government policy. The American people and the national media know that the ball is in Joe Biden's court. Speaker McCarthy and the House GOP have put a deal on the table that claws back reckless government spending and hopefully will slow inflation while taking care of the debt ceiling for a year. That's a win-win opportunity. A deal's on the table. These are good things that the American people want and deserve. Our country cannot keep up racking up debt on the backs of hardworking Americans. We must face this head on. And all we're asking is that the Democrats stop all the political theatrics long enough to participate in a good faith negotiations so we can pay America's bills. We can do both. If anybody's listening today, I want to remind them, when it comes to addressing America's debt crisis, Republicans have done something and put forth a solution. Democrats have not. Mr. Riedel, 
What would your advice be to the president right now? My advice to the president is to sit down and negotiate. The American people at least want to have a discussion, and he should sit down and negotiate with an open mind towards raising the debt limit and reducing a deficit that both sides can... And the deal on the table does both of those. The deal that the Republicans on the House side have, have put forward does both of those, responsible spending and solves the debt limit crisis. It raises the debt limit and it, it, it addresses the deficit. Thank you. Senator Merkley. I yield back. Oh, for the record, uh, since I sit on the Finance Committee also, and since I sit on the Environment and Public Works Committee, let me just note that the tax credit provisions in the IRA came through the Finance Committee, were publicly debated in the Finance Committee, were voted on in the Finance Committee, and the methane program came out of the Environment Public Works Committee based on my methane fee, which was also um, a matter of, of uh, a lot of conversation in the Environment Public Works Committee. So we want to have that debate as well today? No, just correcting the record that there was, in fact, a lot of committee public action on the measures that ended up in the IRA. When, when did we get the bill? bill Senator Merkley. When did we get the bill from the time we got it till we voted? How much time passed? The provisions were clear well before and were subject was, was to it hearing and seconds? debate. Hearing and debate months before. 